Hi there, Sandra here. I wanted to try and help out those people who want to do stickers. And for that, you want a kiss cut and you want a normal cut line usually. So I'm just going to show you how you attribute those things in your cut slot so that you can get the result that you want. Now, there's not only one way of doing this, but this is a nice, easy way. Here I've got two shapes. Now, say I want to cut both of these shapes out. That's fine. I've got them both set up. They're going to be cut. If I go to the wrench, you can see they're going to be cut. What about if I just want to have this one kiss cut? I come over here and instead of cut, I select score. Now, this allows me to set a completely different pressure and speed, if I wish, to what is used for my cut line. So if I go to the cutter setting, I would recommend that you keep your cutter on what you see is what you get, because that way you'll know things are going to cut exactly where you want them to cut. By the way, you can get a little confused between layers and placing if you're using origin point. It does mean you still set your blade over to the origin point of your machine, which on the Juliet's bottom left, as is the Romeo. Some machines have different origin points. So you would still put your blade there on that position of your material. I also recommend that you keep your mat size to the same size as your material, your paper, whatever. It just makes it easier for you to understand the results that you're going to get. It makes you less likely to make mistakes. So at the moment, I would have this cutting. If I want this to score, and I've set that line to score, what I'm going to get here is the score force of 15. And then my outer line is going to cut at the greater force of 29. That is basically done automatically for me just by selecting score. And then I just use a slider to decide what force I want my score lines to be. Now, if you go to the preview, you can see that the cut lines are red lines and the score lines are green lines. So always check your preview to see what you're doing. If your lines are red, they're cut lines. If you want score lines, which are cut with a blade, but score lines nonetheless, you need to be seeing the green one. So then when you go to your cutter, it's going to cut with these settings. Now you can alter these as you wish. You can even save that as a complete preset if you wish to do so. I could, for example, come in here and click on the plus button and you can see all the cut settings that you have. Now, I would be inclined to switch the multi-cut off because I probably don't want to have my score lines multi-cut. And then I could assign a name to this, be it light card or a card manufacturer or a vinyl manufacturer's type of vinyl, whatever. And then I could click on OK and save it and it will come up as a preset with that name. I'm not doing that at the moment. I'm just going to cancel it. But I could do that if I wanted to do it. So if I cut that out at the moment, that is going to score and that is going to cut. It's as simple as that. You have the option to set a different force. But sometimes you might want to have your force set to one thing and your score for set to something higher. Well, you can if you want. It's not a problem. It's still going to show up as a different type of line in here because you have set it to a different type of line. It doesn't mean that it is automatically going to take it down to half the force of your cut line. You are in charge of setting it. So you set it to what you want it to do. Now, I'll cancel that one out. If I go to the wrench here, and I need to select something for this to work, you've also got custom draw presets here, and you've got custom cut presets and things like that. If you have made any presets within these cutter settings, 
then those will show up in a list over here. As it happens, I haven't done that at the moment. You change your type of line over here and then when you go to cutting, you check everything is as you want it to be. So this at the moment is 144. I definitely wouldn't want that. I would want to take that down again. So you have total control over this. It's entirely up to you. I've seen how we can assign different cut forces to different layers. I'm now going to show you how to deal with putting a white border or other coloured border around images for sticker making. Now, if you're doing this for business purposes, I'm going to have to assume that you're going to be making your images as PNGs, that you will have placed multiple images on your paper size as your file, your art file already spaced out to accommodate any offsets that you're going to put on because to do it any other way seems a little bit unusual unless you are doing repeats of the exact same design. The first way is by just clicking on SVG and choosing your artwork if it's got a transparent background and open it. So I've made my page look as if it's black. It's just my workspace and this is because if I'm going to be putting some kind of white border on here and I have a white page I can't easily see it. Now I think I probably want to make these slightly smaller so I will do that and I can center them to the page by simply using the position and size and there we go centered to the page. Now, if I look at the preview, showing printable, I've got all the faces showing. And if I uncheck the printable, you can see that I have cut lines. They're shown in red. This is now basically a print and cut because it's recognized that there is printing to be done and it's recognized that there is cutting to be done but you don't have any white borders on here. And I could go to effects, I'm going to select something first, that helps. Go to effects and go to shadow layer. And I could give myself a white shadow layer on here, shows up quite nicely. And I want a blackout shadow and click on OK. So down here I have my layers panel and if I click on it, I can see I have a shadow layer, I have a print and I have a cut. I have a shadow layer which is going to be set as a cut layer already, like that. But the original print and cut that I brought in has got lines around the faces already. If I go to preview, you can see there are two red lines. And obviously, if I'm after a white border, that's about the last thing I want. So an easy way around this is quite simple. In case you want this layer at any other time, you can simply click on this one and go to print only. So now we've effectively got two print layers. Makes no difference, but we've got two print layers, print layers and a shadow layer, which is a cut layer. So now if I go to preview, we've only got the one cut around the outside and show the printable, we've got the printable there. So my shadow layer at the moment is only a cut layer. I want this to be a print and cut, cut only layer. And I will label this by clicking on this. I'm going to label this cut shadow layer cut. So now I know exactly what I've got. This one I can label as a print because that is still in print mode. So I can label that as a print. So I've got two layers of print basically. I've got my shadow layer. Now my shadow layer is only a cut layer. So what I want to do is to duplicate that layer there we are. 
and I want to make that a print and cut print only. Now if I check on my little palette here, we can see that I have white and white. So I've got an outline in white and the inside is white. Now I can change that to whatever colour I wish now. It doesn't make any difference. Whatever colour I fancy. So this layer is at the top. I don't want it at the top. I want to put it down there so I can see my other images. Now when we go to the preview, and I'm going to put my page, sorry, I'm going to put my page colour back to white because I really don't like it in black. Okay, there we go. So if I click on the preview now and I take the cut lines off, we can see that there's black lines around here. Ignore that one, that was just some mark on my design. I can see that the printable is the entire load of images that I've got. And if I switch the printable off and show my cut lines, I can see my cut lines exactly as I want. So the only thing left to do on this is to label my shadow layer print and my shadow layer cut. So if I look at this one, this is my print and cut. If I look at this layer, this is my print. So I just want to click on this and take the cut off of there and put print. So this is what I call non-destructive because I still have every single layer in there that I had originally. So if I take all of this lot now and I make sure to group it, it's all one page. And I can put this wherever I want now. I can change the background, do what I want to do. So if I want to have a nice patterned background to it, I can simply go to File, Place an Image, Find an Image, some of this will do. Find an image somewhere on my computer. And I want to resize that. And when you look at this one, this automatically is set to print only. There's no cut lines on that, that is just a print. So if you want to have a cut line around this, you need to duplicate the layer and just set it to cut only. And that will be done. Okay. So with these, I have my images precisely as I want. But what you might decide that you want to do is when it comes to cutting that outside line, and so you go down and you find your cut, what you probably want to do to that is set it to score. And if you set it to score, then you are going to get just the score lines. My big print here, whoops, cancel that. I just want to move that down to the bottom and then I can see all my images on the top. So you can move it in the layers easily enough. And now I've got precisely what I want. So if I go to the cutter, go to my cut settings, I can see where my uh, my registration marks should be. And I've got mark offset around design. In this case, I actually want it to mark inset from print bounds. Click on OK. I don't want to cut it at the moment. But if I go to my page and I put show registration marks, we can see I have my registration marks in the corners as I am supposed to. And that is how you do a load of stickers. Is an alternative way which might be slightly quicker. And so I will show you what that is. I am just going to delete everything. So there is another way of importing your PNGs and tracing them and putting a shadow layer on all in one go. If you go to trace, choose your image, Pick up the same image, click on open. Okay, so my offset now I can put in 0.2. And here I have my images with their cut lines around them. But if you look at the preview, we have cut lines. Now I did have a couple that were a bit too close together <laughs> or else I've got some pixels out here. Bearing in mind, 
I just picked up some random images that I'd got. So I've got them more or less as I want it. If I show the printable, I've got that. And yeah, the offset is already put on for me. Now, if I look at the group, I've got a print and I've got a cut. So this cut layer is my offset. I need to duplicate that. I need to check that this one is a print and cut cut, which it is. Because we did a trace, it will automatically come up with that. It just doesn't label it print and cut cut there. But it is a print and cut cut. I need to duplicate that layer. And so this one, I am going to make a print and cut print only. I'm going to go to my palette here and I'm going to put in the colours that I want. So I just want white. I don't want any colours other than white. So go colour there and go to white again. And there we have white. Now you think to yourself, oh dear, it's gone and ruined everything. It hasn't. It's just put that layer over the top. That's all. Right. If I look at this layer here, this is my print layer. Drag that underneath there and I get my faces back again. It's just a case of the layer that I duplicated had gone on top of the other ones. So not a problem. So this layer here is the print. So I can double click on that and I can put shadow print on there. So I know exactly what that is. This is my normal print, which is pretty obvious. And this one here is my shadow cut. There we are. If we want to check, we go into preview, take off the cut lines and show the printable. The printable things show up with a black outline. OK, so that is printable. If I switch off the printable and show the cut lines, these are my cut lines. So again, we're done because you've got a shadow cut is to change that to score lines so that you're kiss cutting it. Apart from that, if you want to add a background picture, just drop an image into the background file, place an image, pick up an image, got one there, that will do. But it's put that artwork there and I just slide it back down so it's underneath again. And that image, because it knows it's an image, will automatically be a print. Now, if you want to put a cut border, a proper cut border around your page, then simply make a shape, make it cut only and put it where you want it to go. And the job is done. But these will now be kiss cut. And you can see when you go to preview, score lines show up as green. They are score lines, therefore they will cut as you have set your score lines to cut, whatever value you have put on that. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care now.